Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much uh, to the Heritage Council for having us here this morning. Um, I effectively had to listen to what Colin was going to say first to decide what I'd be able to fill in the pieces afterwards. But um, I'm from Cassery uh, on the, the west side of Roscommon County. Um, I'd like to disagree with a lot of the research. I suppose you can get research to say just about anything about any town in the country. But I, I think the biggest asset that towns like Cassery have are the people and the community. And it's, it's really about talking about the resources that we have and highlighting them as opposed to highlighting sort of the negative things that you'd find. Um, I, in 2011, came back to Cassery having spent three years in the UK working and the previous 11 years working in Dublin. Before that, I, I studied in Galway. Um, so I had been away from Cassery for about 16 years in total. And the reason I went back to Cassery was because I couldn't think of a nicer place or a better place to settle down and to raise family and things like that. And I'm sure most of you representing different towns around the country would probably feel the very same about the people that you're representing and about the communities you're part of. Um, initially, when the town team idea was brought to us, um, there was roadshows held all over Roscommon and um, a lot of representatives from a lot of different organisations within the towns attended these meetings. A lot of people had heard this general information from the councils beforehand, how money would be made available, how support would be made available. But this, the town team initiative when it was relaunched uh, launched in Roscommon did have an element to it that there was a little bit of substance behind it and there was a bit of backing behind it. Um, a year after our, we were established, it was interesting to see the program for government included a section on town team initiatives. And here were a number of projects that the Cassari town team had introduced as part of the program for government of a town team initiative nationwide. Um, Initially, I suppose we started off with projects like the, the green parking spaces that Colin mentioned. The green parking spaces was just a pilot idea. Um, rather than people working in towns, parking on the main street for the whole day and stopping customers from actually uh, using the retail outlets, the idea was to paint a space, to put one hour on it. And there was no invigilators. In Roscommon, we don't have paid parking, so we're very lucky that people can park where they want and customers can come in. Um, so it's unregulated, but the retailers have really got on board behind it, and the actual patrons of the towns have started to utilise it a lot better. People can pull into butchers in and out in five minutes, pull into retail shops. And it's, there's information of it on the cassery.ie website, if anyone would like to have a look at that. Um, a lot of the information I will refer back to the Cassery.ie website um, and you'll find a full history of what we've been doing in Cassery for the last three and a half years. Um, we believe, and we have a lot of community groups in Cassery, we have a lot of voluntary groups in Cassery, but as Colm said, a lot of these groups don't work together. Everyone is pulling in certain directions. So the whole idea of the town team initiative was to try and act as a as a group that would draw in the resources of all of the other voluntary groups in the town and try and have a collective plan for the town. Um, the, the result of that is by the town submitting applications as a single unit as opposed to five or six different units, we've been far more successful in uh, getting funding from both the council and from national bodies. Um, so initially when we set up, we wanted to come up with a brand for Cassery, uh, some sort of, uh, looking at it, I suppose, in a business point of view, how do you make a small town in the west of Ireland that people generally drive through with no reason to stop? How do you give yourself an identity? How do you make yourself seem like a bigger, more productive animal than you necessarily are? So we came up with the idea of the, initially it started as the Cassery Town Notice Board on Facebook. But that has changed over to Cassery.ie now. We had uh, the Minister for Communications, Dennis Nocton, came down to an enterprise day that we organised to launch the Cassery.ie website. Now, for a town that has a population of about 3,500 people, we have a website and a Facebook page that has an average interaction on a weekly basis of between 70 and 120,000 visits. So we're punching well above our weight. And 
the, the idea behind that was if we could tap into the diaspora, which every town in Ireland has far and wide, um, any connections that we could sort of counteract the brain drain and the, the graduate drain that Colin pointed out to in his research there. Um, as well as that, we tried to get younger people more involved with projects in the town. So uh, we listened to some research that the transition year students in Cassidy had. Um, we got some ideas of things they'd be interested in doing in town. And then we gave them the autonomy to roll with it themselves, and we just stood back and supported them with the admin side of things, a bit of the management and the background. But we've had our transition year students in Cassidy participate in a number of public heritage and cultural events um, over the last couple of years. Um, we planned a heritage walk to launch an extension of the Suck Valley Way to Clunalis House in Cassidy, and I'll go through Clunalis House in a moment, but um, it was an extension through a forested area, and for Halloween we got the transition year students to dress it up with cobwebs and scary witches and mice and scary noises and storytelling. And we said, if we can get 70 or 80 people to attend something like that, it's a start in the first year. And logistically, we gave the students the opportunity to manage an event for 70 or 80 people. That's not easy for someone like Colm or myself who may have a small bit of experience in doing something like that. But for the students, it was something that they all took on. You had an over, a project manager, and then you had all these little subgroups. And I suppose the idea behind things like that was to get them involved in these things, to encourage them, to get them recognition for these sort of projects. And then hopefully the following year when we were looking for volunteers for other things, because they had the experience, because they got recognized, they were in a position to get involved with other projects around town. And it's sort of, for younger people, gives them an opportunity to get ownership in town. It's not something that, oh, that's something that the older group does and we're not allowed to get involved in that. So we've been very successful in that. And just so happens that event that we were planning for 70 or 80 people ended up with 405 attendees on the morning and was the largest attended heritage event on the Halloween weekend in Roscommon. Um, so it's hopefully the Heritage Council and a lot of other of the national bodies will have that on the calendar for next Halloween when we'll be able to cater for in excess of 400 people. Um, so just, I have some slides here. We may need them or we may not because Lean will tell me when I have to take questions. Um, this is the website that we launched and effectively there's a blog there. Our Facebook page links to the story so it, hits, it improves the numbers of the website. And, when you improve the numbers of the website, you get higher up the rankings when you're searching with your website optimization. So by linking through a very high, very active Facebook page, we've made our website very active as well. And the website gives the impression of a much larger town, a much more, um, I suppose, active voluntary committee, even though I'm sure like all of your towns, the voluntary committees on the ground are probably 30, 40 people strong and everyone is spread among four or five organizations. But we have been able to leverage further voluntary efforts in our locality through our Facebook page and our website. Um, this is the thing that we were probably most proud of in the last 12 months, was the launch of the Cassidy Town app. Now the whole idea of the Cassidy Town app was to have a different multimedia medium for people to be able to interact with. People aren't going to websites as much now, so we need to keep moving with it. Um, we created the app in conjunction with a development organization or a development company in Galway called Boone Agency, uh, Colm Handy, I, some of you may know Colm. Um, and since the launch, Colm sat down with us, he heard what we were trying to achieve. We wanted the ability to point people towards restaurants, shops, uh, accommodation, um, activities. But we also, as Colin pointed out, have a number of walks in our locality. And there wasn't necessarily a solution out there that we could take off the shelf that would allow somebody to get on one of these walks, use a phone, and map a walk. You can map roads, but you can't necessarily map trails unless it's created. So the Boone Agency in Galway went off and worked extensively for a couple of months on developing this. 
and have come back with a solution that we're now able to introduce the Suck Valley Way and more recently the Berra Brefni Way, which is going to be Ireland's answer to the Camino coming right through from um, Western Cork up to uh, North Leitrim, the Miners Way in North Leitrim. Now, some of you from Munster may be familiar with the design of this app because once the Cassari app was launched, we worked closely with Boone Agency and we've attended a number of events around the country, uh, most recently in Fermoy, where this app, or the Fermoy version of this app was launched. And an insurance company in Munster were so impressed with how the app was and how it could do for the locality that they agreed to sponsor it to the, or to the tune of 5,000 euros per town in Munster um, for the development of an app for each of the towns. So um, I would encourage you to take down the name Boone Agency to have a look at it. For any of the towns that are represented here from Munster, you may be entitled to get money that you don't necessarily know that you have. I thought Colin would have handed out some money while he was up, or maybe Liam, but it's just the, the Cassari lad that's pointing you towards that. Um, the app isn't a finished solution. Like the app has to be something that's evolving over time and it's, it takes a large uh, voluntary effort from both the students and from our own town team committee to actually deliver on that. Um, just going back to the, right, that's my call. Uh, just going back to the whole town team initiative, I know there are some town teams here represented today, but a lot of councillors in a lot of parts of the country see the town team as maybe something that is counterproductive to what they're trying to do. And um, some of them see, are you just giving a platform to somebody to run against you at a later stage? And um, that's not been our experience in Cassari. We have um, our three local councillors very active on our own committee. We have a uh, Fianna Fáil, a Fianna Gael, and an independent councillor, uh, Councillor uh, Pascal Fitzmaurice, Councillor Michael Creighton, and Councillor Nigel Deneen. And each of them has been able to leverage projects, take ownership and lead on those, while still not worrying about what the next person is doing. And like, we've, we've given them full support. Um, the councillors have been able to leverage money because they're able to see where the progress of these things are going. So I suppose what we've always said, and just to follow on what Colin was saying with the slides earlier on, it's about collaboratively working together. Our next goal as a town team is to try and spread out to the actual villages surrounding Cassari so that as a wider area we have more of an identity. We have a number of smaller towns um, inside the sort of 15 mile radius of Cassari and we've started interacting with all of those because Cassari as a destination might not necessarily be somewhere that you would like to visit but as a whole we're a lot more attractive and if we can get people to call for two or three days to see different things as a wider area, um, we believe that people will enjoy it and spread the word. Um, I know it's mainly I'm here for questions, so I'm going to slide over some of these overhead photographs. But actually, I'll have to send those on because they're not very <coughs> visible. Um, walking trails. Colin mentioned we have the Suck Valley Way, but the Berra Brefni Way is something that's going to be a massive um, trail and a massive tourist attraction. It's going to be the walking equivalent to the Wild Atlantic Way for Ireland. And it's something that I would encourage you all to look up, get as much information. Some of your towns may already be on the route for that. But it's something that we all are linking together on. Each town on the actual trail is reliant on the success of the other towns and how we market this. So I think collaboratively, as we move forward, I think the towns will be meeting on a more regular basis, like what you're doing here today to talk about how we can develop that further. Um, I would ask you to look up uh, on Kishthan at the Enterprise Hub. This is the food, the training college that was set up in Kasseri. There's currently 16 people being trained up in um, cookery skills in on Kishthan in Kasseri. This was an old industrial building that the community Enterprise Kasseri took over, was that managed to convert certain areas of the um, industry building to a boxing club, um, a basketball court, that's the, the basketball court there, boxing club. We had a local business that were interested in supporting the creation of a gym down there. And then we've managed to create the enterprise on Kishton Hub in that premises as well. And the next phase of that is going to be incubation units where businesses will be able to set up food incubation units and actually rent out space to develop product and hopefully sell in the area. 
Because this is the Heritage Council, I also wanted to highlight um, Trinity Arts uh, Centre, which was an old derelict church in Castlery that has been totally uh, rejuvenated and revitalised as an arts centre and a theatre. Um, this was in ruin, there was no roof, um, it was derelict, but through conservation, through access to national funding, they've managed to resurrect this building. And we have now, I've, I've been lucky enough to be on the stage in a place like this. Um, we've had a number of uh, music recitals, art exhibitions, but all of these are other reasons for people to come to places like Castlery and experience different things. So I know because we mentioned festivals and because it's up here, I just wanted to highlight that the Cassari Rose Festival is taking place on the 28th of July through to the 5th of August. We will have a number of heritage walks. We will have a barbecue at Clunalis House on the day. I'll mention Clunalis House in one minute. Um, but do look up the Cassari.ie website. Do have a look at the app and you'll get a lot of the information on the activities that are going to be held locally. Now, on Sunday night, uh, Lords and Ladles uh, is going to be on RTE1, and it's going to be broadcast from Clunalis House, the home of the O'Connor Don, uh, the last High King of Ireland and the historic uh, King of Connacht. Um, this is a feature, this is an amenity that we have in Cassari that very few people talk about. And like a lot of year towns, I'm sure there's a lot of resources and there's a lot of very interesting pieces that we all keep to ourselves and don't highlight. So have a look at uh, RTE1 on Sunday night, check out Lords and Ladles and experience Clunalis House, and we'd be delighted to have you up to see it in person or to enjoy some of the festival at a later stage during the summer or even participate in the Berra Brefni way as you're passing through Cassari. Um, what I'll do now is open it up to questions and it don't, they don't all have to be directed at me, they can be directed to Colm as well, but I'm here to answer questions. That's what I was asked to do. 